Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video, and today we're going to be discussing can the America First Movement win midterms in a landslide? Can Donald Trump and his followers make a ginormous comeback in the midterms that is expected to be a red wave year? Well, well, essentially, what does that mean? What do you mean making a comeback? Well, essentially, can they primary the GOP establishment or the traditional Republicans that they say are evil and have sold out the country and kick them out and put in some America First people and get rid of the Democrats who they clearly don't like either? So, of course, as of right now, um, Donald Trump has stated that a couple of his, a couple governors and a senator will be see receiving um, primary challenges, or he will be endorsing a primary challenges. Senator Murkowski from Alaska, Governor Ryan Kemp from Georgia, and Governor Mike DeWine from Ohio, all three are expected to see a uh, primary challenge from the America First, if anybody steps up to the plate. And, of course, I do see Murkowski losing, as well as Brian Kemp, but I, well, but I don't know about Mike DeWine, so the, um, Mike DeWine could be a, a, um, excuse me, could be a big challenge, uh, for the America First to overcome. So some other possible things that could happen, let's, of course, um, the former governor of Alaska, Sarah Palin, is going to be possibly a challenge for good old um, Lisa Murkowski, she's already teased the idea. I would love to see her run, as I like to call her, the Donald Trump prototype, of course. Um, let's see here. Ah, oh, shit. Let's see, hold on. Ah. Sorry, my brain just shut down. Another one is um, incumbent Governor Mike Dunleavy from Alaska. He could be also be a, another challenge towards um, Lisa Murkowski. He would be a great choice, and then again, if you want someone who will, you has a proven track record of America First, I would just go with Sarah Palin. She's probably the best choice. Um, Mar Mark Rubio, Marco Rubio has now been getting some flack from the America First side of things that I've seen so far. It looks like that uh, people are hoping to get this guy out of here, out of the Senate, and put someone else in. Even though Florida, I think, will be um, competitive. Uh, Florida's got the kind of a uh, tendency to... Um, favor the incumbent the incumbent party the incumbent president party I guess you could say and so Marco Rubio could be challenged by uh, I on have on here uh, Matt Gates as well as Brian Mast both of which have shown huge support towards the president um, again Sarah Minnesota Palin Matt Gates has a proven track record of America first um, support unlike Brian Mast who would just be in there I would presume to have more veteran presence in, within the side of things, even though the Republican Party is the party of the veteran. Um, Rob Portman, another senator who I've seen get a lot of flack uh, from people who I would presume are the leaders of the America First Movement, uh, Red Eagle being one of them. Um, again, again, Rob Portman, you're probably not going to see him get uh, primary successfully. Mark Fukita is already primarying him, and he's probably not going to be successful. Um, Jim Jordan, He's a possible guy. He hasn't said anything about it, but he. But if I would presume he would pr probably be unsuccessful primarying Portman, because Portman just has more name recognition in the state than Jordan does. Probably not in the district that Jordan, Ohio's fourth district. Probably not there. He'd probably win that district very handedly. But still, um, I don't see Rob Portman getting a uh, successful primary challenge. Um, let's see. Let's see. Now, again, the the North Carolina race, of course, there are some people. Uh, the outgoing Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest could be the guy to replace Richard Burr. Again, I don't think he should run just because he lost to Roy Cooper by four and a half points statewide. And people who lose usually don't typically do well. Um, some other people that could end up running is uh, Trump's daughter-in-law, Laura Trump. I don't want her to run either. Uh, Donald Trump just lost the election. And it's a risk putting a Trump out there to run for a statewide race after someone with the same name and is actually related to you lost on a national uh, stage. The guy I think should run is the Lieutenant Governor-elect Mark Robinson. The Republican Party needs diversity, whether they like to admit it or not. And Mark Robinson's your best bet, probably the most America First Republican I know, even more America First than Donald Trump. This guy literally doesn't back up on anything, explains himself well. Is a great speaker. This guy 
is the future of the Republican Party. He's going to be a, a good, the governor of North Carolina one day. He's going to be the senator of North Carolina one day. And he might even be president one day. Who knows? Next is Pat Toomey's Senate seat. Uh, of course, there are two people that I'm looking at, clearly. One second. Sorry about that. But, of course, first up is Pennsylvania's 16th District Congressman Mike Kelly. Mike Kelly is a staunch supporter of Donald Trump and very popular amongst young voters. And, well, mostly older voters, but there are some young voters out there who support the guy. So Mike Kelly should be up on the top of people's list. He's uh, considering either a... He's considering just running for re-election, which I think is the best bet for him. Considering Pennsylvania is going to be a battleground, probably more of a battleground than any other state at this moment. Another one is Donald Trump Jr., there's also a problem with Donald Trump Jr., which I don't want either one of these guys running. I'd more so, I would support Kelly over Trump, but that's just me. Donald Trump Jr. lives in New York, not Pennsylvania, and he's considering a run for the Pennsylvania Senate seat. He lives in the New York City metropolitan area, essentially. If anything, he needs to run for mayor. I think that'd be perfect for him. But if he were to go down to Pennsylvania just to run for a Senate seat, there's a term we have for that. Carpetbagging. It's not popular back during the uh, Reconstruction era, and it's not popular now. It's not right. And leave it to the Pennsylvania Republicans. Sean Parnell would be an excellent person. Someone that I forgot to put in this article. Sean Parnell would be an excellent choice for this. But not Don Jr. Sorry. As you can see, this is the uh, current battleground map. Uh, only two states I would have is toss-up, Florida and Pennsylvania. There you go. Now, what about Democrat-held states? Arizona... Um, of course, this, uh, let's see, there first we have Kelly Ward. Again, she, again, uh, Red Eagle said it best on Twitter. Um, he was talking about Paul Gosar being the best choice for the seat, and I asked, and I knew he was, but I, I thought, do I think Ducey was the best, is the best choice in my opinion. But I asked, okay, what about Kylie Kelly Ward? You haven't talked about her in a while. And he said that she lost twice in the primary, so she needs to run for maybe a congressional seat. Or governor. Governor would also work, but I don't think she should anymore. Okay, next up is, of course, Paul Gosar. Of course, probably the number one choice for the America First people, Paul Gosar. Gosar? I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. But Paul Gosar, very popular with young Republicans, especially those of the America First, and is a staunch supporter of Donald Trump. He would do very well against, well, against Mark Kelly. I think he'd be able to win. But, of course, I did put Doug Ducey on this article. This was before the. This was the, literally the day before he s spoke out against Donald Trump. Literally the day before, and I was like, "Ah, you ruined your chance to be part of the America First. Literally, I thought like this guy. Yeah, he supports Donald Trump. Very America First. Very popular. Yeah, we like that. And then Red Eagle's like, "Yeah, screw Doug Ducey." And I was like, "Well, there goes that." Because Red Eagle's kind of like the AOC of the Republican Party right now, and I don't mean crazy. I mean like young charismatic, people like them, the other side hates them. I mean, literally, tell me I'm not, tell me I'm wrong. Uh, Chris Van Hollen's seat in Maryland, uh, people would be, usually this ain't a competitive seat, but uh, there's only one man for the job, and that is uh, the governor, Larry Hogan. Right now, he's considering a White House bid, but would it be better to be known as the senator from the, the Republican senator from the deep blue state of Maryland rather than the Republican governor? I think that would be better, in my opinion. That's just my thing. An another one is the New Hampshire a Senate seat. Again, there's only one person for the job, and that's Governor Chris Sununu. This guy has been praised by Republican after Republican after Republican, even after some Democrats, too. And right now, he's more so leaning toward a fourth term as governor, but of course, a lot of people want him to run for Senate. I think he should. I think he's got it in the tank. Governor Chris Sununu. I wouldn't be surprised if he won by a likely margin, but still, like, I think he can run and win big for the Republican Party and make that seat red again. Okay, now we're going onward to the rep uh, the gubernatorial side of things, and of course we've talked about uh, Brian Kemp and Mike DeWine before. I do mention on here that Doug Collins is most likely going to run for office in 2022, whether that's against Raphael Warnock or Brian Kemp. I could see Collins winning against both of them, more so Warnock than Kemp, but I do see uh, Ruff, or Doug Collins running in 2022, regardless of what happens. Uh, in Ohio, again, we mentioned Jim Jordan running for governor again. I think he'd be more successful against Mike DeWine than Rob Portman. Uh, Jim Renacci, again, I don't see him being as successful, but he's also being floated up there. 
Um, now we talk. Now I go down here and talk about Connecticut, and I do mention the uh, the former Republican from well, not excuse me, the Republican from Connecticut who served as Donald Trump's small business administrator, Linda McMahon. Um, again, she hasn't had the best of luck running for uh, running for office in Connecticut. She's run twice and failed both times, but I do think she's if she runs against an unpopular guy like Ned Lamont. And she runs her campaign pretty good towards the America First type of thing. She could do it. Honestly, she could. I think she could become the governor of uh, Connecticut. There's another woman that I forgot to mention. And that was Candace Owens. I forgot to mention her. But she is also another possible pick if people can coax, coax her into running for governor in Connecticut. Uh, now we're talking about Laura Kelly's seat in Kansas. Again, there's only one person I could think of, and that was the independent Greg Orman. If Republicans can get him to side with them and run as a Republican in hopes of him not running again as an independent and spoil, quote-unquote, the election, that could do well. Uh, in Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer's seat, she's in a weird position right now. Republicans are looking to impeach and possibly remove her from office, which is weird. I, again, I think her lieutenant governor is a much weaker candidate, but still, it's kind of weird that you're wanting to do that a couple years before the election. Maybe if it was before this current election, the 2020 election, man, yeah, maybe that's fine. But you're doing that before the midterm, so that's a bit weird. But I, the only person that I mentioned on here was John James as a possible candidate to beat her. And I think he could do it this time. Uh, next up is Tim Wall's seat in uh, Minnesota. And again, there's only one person I mentioned, Mike Lindell. I do think Mike Lindell is suiting up for something in the midterms. And I do think it's a gubernatorial run. Again, it's a risk running the guy he has a... He's got a history behind him with drugs and all that, but I think he's I think he's cleaned up now. I think he's got that uh, appeal with him that, yeah, I sobered up and I can do this and all that. Next up is Tom Wolf, Tom Wolf's seat. Even though I don't think he's going to, Pennsylvania's seat's going to flip red, I do think that there, it could be very competitive. Um, the Rust Belt in itself is going to be competitive. Maybe Wisconsin to a lesser extent, because Tony Evers is kind of popular. Not as popular as Walker, but popular nonetheless. Enough to win in, you know, to win a gubernatorial seat. Oh my god, my phone's about to die. Ain't that fun. Uh, but again, I do, there's only one person I really mention on here. Actually, two people, and that's Mike Kelly. Again, I mention him. Uh, and the uh, House, the state House Speaker Mike Terzai, he's probably going to end up winning the nomination, and he'll probably end up losing to John Fetterman, which I, I like Fetterman. He's not that bad, but again, I do think that Terzai will get the nomination. And then Rhode Island again. There's only there's like it looks like there's only one Republican that ever runs statewide and has that ability to run statewide and make sure the party doesn't die there. And that's Alan Fung. And I think if he was running against the incumbent, if she was allowed to run for a uh, third term, Alan Fung would beat her because she's unpopular. But, um, again, I do think Alan Funk could run, but I think he'd win in any scenario that's not him running against Matt Brown. But I do think Matt Brown's going to run and win his nomination, win the nomination, so he... So, Alan Funk won't be su successful for a fourth time, for his fourth attempt. But, of course, Republicans' best case in 2022 is 56 seats in the Senate, 37 gubernatorial seats, and possibly a triple-digit gain in the House... Not likely. Um, the last time there was a triple-digit gain, something bad really happened to the country. Again, if our um, economy just shatters, because our, like, my history teacher, he, my civics teacher, my dad, he is an economic, and he said that our economy is so fragile. If Biden doesn't shatter the son bitch, we'll be fine. The Democrats don't have to worry about a triple-digit gain. For Republicans, they don't have to worry about that. Unless Biden destroys our economy, then yeah, you're you kind of fucked yourselves. But anyway, guys, this is the chaotic one saying peace.